Hi everyone. Welcome to the Coloring Oasis. This is Emily. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, I recorded a video two days ago that I have not released yet, which is all the coloring goodies I got for Christmas from family and friends. A ton of stuff. I cannot wait to show it to you. As soon as I finished the video, I forgot to include these. <laughs> so I'm actually doing, I'm going to release this video first and I'm going to show you these and we're going to test it out. And then tomorrow um, I'll probably release my uh, big Christmas gift haul. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. So you don't miss any of my upcoming tutorials or coloring book flip throughs or coloring book hauls, things like that. Um, today I'm going to show you my Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend colored pencils complete collection. I got all of the tins, all the different sets, and we're going to open them, test them out on um, some Nina paper on an Etsy printable and in a new coloring book. And I'm going to show you also two coloring books that had not arrived at the time I filmed the last video that I just got that I'm going to um, show you those really quick as well. So first let's look at these pencils. So the Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend, um, I actually received a huge uh, HSN gift card and I bought these all on HSN because they do have art supplies. Most of them are sold out now. Um, I will link all the ones below I can find of these on Amazon and HSN because you can't find them all on both places. Um, so Spectrum Noir, as you know, does these um, fantastic alcohol markers, the Tri-Blend Spectrum Noir markers, and I have all of those. I've done videos on those, but I've never had their pencils. And so I bought all of these sets with uh, my HSN gift card. This would be the um, Earth Tone 12 piece set. And again, these are water-based pencils. So we're going to test them with my Arteza water pen, brush pen on some coloring pages. So we have these gorgeous earth tones, glacier blue, powder blue, cloudy, soft cream, tawny moss, wood, scotch butter, um, shire green, dandelion, and daffodil. It's not open yet. This is the only one that was like a small special set. The rest are all large. So we have the primaries, the 24 set, which has all of these primary colors, ruby, dandelion, sunshine, spinach, mango, parakeet, bright green, Bottle green, citrus yellow, lots of blues. Sapphire, deep blue, opal blue, indigo. Lots of great blues. Beautiful colors. Um, we have the uh, Essentials 24 pieces, which has more, looks more like earth tones and like city colors, like buildings and cityscapes and stuff. Architecture colors to me. Lots of gunmetals and grays and browns, kind of um, neutral palettes here is what makes me think of this ginger gravel fossil gray black umber apricot so we have that one this one is the botanical collection and some came in plastic and some didn't don't know why but here's the botanical collection beautiful pretty colors i can't wait to use these lots of flowers and some earth tone some um, like for flower and tree stems and bark, browns. So, and these are all high quality artist colored pencils. Then we have the portrait collection, premium professional quality, 24 pieces. Now it doesn't all look like skin tones. I mean, we've got some like maybe uh, Hispanic or Caucasian skin tones. I'm not sure why there's greens for portraits, maybe for backgrounds, um, some good blush colors, maybe for some shadowing, you have the, the darker grays here. Not sure, I she would do her eyes in the green. Then we have the beautiful florals collection, 24 pieces, all these gorgeous purples and pinks and oranges for flowers, love these, and go figure, why don't they put all of these different sets into one massive set? Maybe they do, but I looked all over and I couldn't find it. So I'm probably going to have to remove all of these and put them in a pencil case. So these are the gorgeous florals with all those purples and pinks. 
And just so you know, each of these sets on HSN was about $29. And HSN does have five easy pays. Three to five, depending on what time of year. I think they run in the $30 range on Amazon. Um, here we have, again, the Aqua Blend Essentials Collection, 24 pieces, which is odd because it's different than the other Essentials. The other one that was called Essentials had more of those cityscape colors, right, for this Essentials. This Essentials has, like, essential colorful colors. <laughs> so I don't know. Go figure. That's kind of odd. Figure like they should have another name for it. Lastly, we have the Aquablend Landscape Collection. So we have, again, 24 pieces, beautiful colors for like watercolor portraits, lots of earth tones here, lots of shrubberies and flower colors. So um, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets. I think um, we're going to go ahead and test out. I have here um, Christina Caron's um, Patreon special picture winter warmth printed on my uh, Amazon Nina paper, which I love. This is Snow Princess by Digital Morning on Etsy, which has a lot of these snowy treats and stuff. I thought we could test something on here. And then I have the two new books I wanted to show you, which we will do quickly. And the first one I'm in love with, this is Midnight Spring by Coco Wayo. And it's a gorgeous book with the black background and it's got the solid dark black background, not like the faded kind of grayish black background you see sometimes in the black background coloring books so look how i mean i know my my um what do you call it my overhead light is shining on here but it's really black it's not like faded at all and i love it so great landscapes and florals to try some of these pencils on in a basic amazon black paper and this book was very inexpensive it's like six dollars but i didn't have it and I came across it randomly and I love the look of it and you don't have to worry about any background colors which is nice because you have that black so you can just focus right on the natural scenes look at this for the that florals collection all those tulips it's very different and I like how there are some people some landscape some botanicals some wildlife and Coco Wild does have an entire Midnight collection, so there are a few other Midnight books as well. I think some were other seasons. So I will see if I can pick some of those up and show you. And maybe we'll test out oh, some pencil. Oh, I love this. Maybe we'll test out our pencils in this book. box yeah and so like i said you see how it's a nice black black paper so that's midnight spring i took a while the other book i got is this magical maidens grayscale by jennifer zimmerman i have to admit i'm probably going to send this book back i don't really like it um i don't know why it looks digitally a little blurry like the cover was made on someone's home computer and I mean, there are only a couple images I like. I think she, maybe she's on Etsy. But it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's not real crisp. It's kind of dull. I like a few of the pictures, but I just, it's like the grayscale doesn't look natural. I don't know why. It doesn't look like any of my other grayscales. It's hard to describe, but it's kind of blur, like, I don't know. I'm just picky. It, I mean, compared to something like um, by, um, like a Nocturnes book or any of the Christina Caron Grayscale books, I just I'm just not digging it a lot. So 
I think she self-publishes this. And of course it is very inexpensive Amazon paper, which is usually fine. It's just, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's, something's, it just doesn't look like it's really faded here. I don't know. Something's wrong with it. it just, it's striking me as wrong. So everybody to each their own though. I will link this below if you are interested. Not my preference. Um, okay. So let's get to testing the pencils and we shall test it on. Let's just start testing it on um, this Christine Caron. And let's use, let's see, portrait. What should we use? How about we do, I'm not sure if there's anything in the florals I want to use. Maybe. Maybe something in this is essential for some blues. Maybe we could do her hat in one of these blues here. Let's open this up from the plastic. Okay. So we have these tins. They're also, it's also tape closed here. Gonna open this. Move my scissors. Come on. Open it. There we go. It's white on the inside. The lid does stay attached. Nice tray. Really pretty tray. Unfortunately, I do not have my pencil sharpener in here. But they look a little dull or like square. They're sharpened more to like a square than a point, which is fine. Oh, we can actually try some of these greens. What are the greens we have on here? Bottle green and spinach green. Those might be some good colors for a beanie hat. Let's try the greens actually. So, wow, the pencils have a nice weight to them. They're a matte, they're not really shiny. They're like a matte, a matte finish has the name bottle green with the color, which looks very similar to the tip color. No numbers, just names. This is the spinach. Not really quite sharp as I'd like. I don't know why I didn't think to bring my sharpener in here. That's okay. We're gonna improvise. So I'm going to just apply a little bit of this darker color. And this is my Nina paper I get on Amazon. It's my favorite paper. I will link that below if you want to pick some of that up if you like to do printables. It's very, they're very, they're kind of so silky. Just doing some of the darker in the shadows. It's going on nice and feathery and kind of silky. Um, my background is a little soft because I have a tablecloth. So if you have a harder, like a drawing board or a wood table underneath, you're going to get a little bit of pressure. So I'm just going to kind of do this is, and we're doing the spinach right now. Let's go in with this one, the bottle green. See if we can't. Fill this in, very light. We're gonna go over it with the water brush. Definitely these need to be sharpened, but at least you can see how they perform right out of the case. I'm actually just kind of smudging it in like I would a chalk stick. Oh, it's a really pretty green. This reminds me of like a, a leaf green. And let's put a little more of this dark in the center again. Just to kind of outline where there's some grayscale here. Um, 
I like to go on fully dry to see how everything looks before I dump, jump in with the water brush. Sometimes I might just do the pencils dry and not use the water. Just depends. So I'm playing it pretty, I'm applying it several layers and somewhat like a medium thickness. And I'm gonna grab my Arteza water pen. These are my favorite. Just test how much water's on here. I'm gonna squeeze some, shake it under my floor. <laughs> so it's not too drippy. And I'm just gonna start. Ooh, look at that. Don't want it too wet. I should ideally have a paper towel when you're doing this, not putting it on your hand like I am. Ooh, that looks nice. It's really smoothing it in. Oh, nice. So I'm gonna do another dry area next to this one and then you can and then I'll compare so let's go in again with that spinach I'm gonna do some of these dry areas again there are a lot of different ways you can use your watercolor pencils you can put a little water on the page and then go in with your pencil I like to go on dry it's just my preference you can go back over the wet spots, blend in a little more if you like, like I'm doing here. Um, sometimes that changes the effect. I prefer to color in my area like I would if they were just like a Prismacolor. You know, like go in, do your area dry, and then watercolor or water brush it. Let's go in with this bottle green. I'm just gonna go on. And you know, if we, we know we're going over it with water, we don't have to worry about getting every little, you know, page pour, so to speak. Or if there's a little bit of white here or there, it's not a big deal because we are going to color it in, but I like my color pretty solid overall and rich. See, I did get a little water on this by touching in the middle and it's harder to color in the full area with the pencil when it's wet on the tip, which is why I like to go and dry. So like I'm pushing a lot harder than I did for the first section because it got a little wet. This is why I like to do the water last. Go back in with my dark one. I'll zoom in and show you the difference here in a minute and definitely please sharpen your pencils before you endeavor to do what I'm doing. It's not quite dry yet. I'm gonna just do these little V's. It's fine if it overlaps into the next panel because we are going to do all of them. but it gets a little scratchier once it's wet. I know my pencil's a little too dull. It's okay, so let's look at the difference. The left one, we did the water already. This one is dry, so you can totally see the difference. This looks fluffy and soft. That looks a little more scratchy. So let's get Okay, oops, there it is, I thought I dropped it. <laughs> Let's get our water brush, make sure there's still enough water on it. Squeeze another drop. And I just like to go upward. Since I have the darker color in the middle, on the edges, I like to kind of, just kind of blend that in because it gives it like a nice gradient kind of, like it's a more natural green with natural knit, different green fibers, because this is like a knit cap. Maybe we use that, like there's several different shades of green yarn. So I might've had a little too much water. 
my brush so really the heavier you go with the water the more it is going to um uh, what do you call it well not run but yeah so you can see one is wet and one is dry let's try a different color um let's get out some of those blues Let's see, we're gonna do our whole cap in green. I don't know, would it look odd if her gloves didn't match? It might. I'm thinking let's do, let's do some hair. Actually, let's go next. We could go next into the Coco Wyo book. Let's see. Let's pull some greens from the botanical collection. And then we will go in I'm gonna let this dry and we'll look back at this in a minute. Let's go into our botanical collection and do some greens for some leaves in on the Amazon paper. Come on, come on, that didn't work. Backfire, oh, it did. All right. And this one's not, is that taped? Oh, <laughs> wrong side. Come on make these child and adult proof practically okay got that and we've got to open the botanical collection Ooh, pretty pretty there's some different greens let's try out some more mossy looking greens let's get some of these other brighter greens here we have a nice bright green and we have a parakeet. And again, flat edge. So they don't sharpen these to a point, which could be intentional because maybe they don't want them to break all off inside the case. Let us open up Midnight Spring because it's so pretty. Let's see if we can find some leaves something to test here let's test it on something like this um you definitely want a divider paper which i don't have so i'm going to use this i'm going to see if we can get out some of this break some of this spine here so let's try which looks darker. I'm just gonna go with this um, parakeet first. And just right out of the box without even sharpening it. And by the way, for sharpening, um, I use my jar, jar link, I guess, uh, colored pencil sharpener. And I've shown that in many of my videos. It is absolutely the best colored pencil automatic sharpener. It has three settings. I usually do all mine at a three. It has an automatic stop. It knows when to stop when it's at the right point. I've never found any pencil it doesn't work for. Um, see, so I don't have it right here. It's in the other room because I was <laughs> coloring in there yesterday watching Hallmark Christmas movies. But I will link that below and I have no doubt this will work just fine. I've, I, you know, these pencils, I've used every single pencil ever on my jar link. Um, so I'm just doing it nice and kind of fluffy and I'm lightening it as I go up here so I can put that other green in. So if you just do a very light feathery stroke, it's going on really nicely on this Amazon paper. And I will show it to you dry zoomed in before we do the water. Now I'm going to go in with this bright green, the top part. You can go as dark or light as you want. The lighter you go, once you apply the water, the lighter the, it's gonna be more of a pastel kind of effect. If you go on heavier, it's just gonna pop out a lot more. You don't have to do nearly as many layers as I'm doing, but I just really wanna see this color. And we're blending these greens together. Botanical collection nice green 
I'm going to go back over the, this one, blend into the color, the second color, some layers. And now Amazon paper isn't known for being able to take a lot of water. You won't want to, you don't want your brush to be all super drippy. <clears throat> We'll try a different color after the green. So I'm going to show it to you dry. Really nice on this paper. Very nice. Kind of like a prism color, but le no crumbles. A little less waxy, but it doesn't feel super dry like an oil pencil either. Now we have our water pen. I'm going to test it on my hand. There's some of that other green still on there. So we're going to wipe that off. And then give it a squeeze to get the water flowing. Make sure it's not too much. And we can go down. You can blend either way. The darker one, if you if you pull the dark down, it's gonna blend into the light. So I go lighter to dark, but you can do whatever you want. I'm just going upward. Ooh, it's kind of turning it like a lime, yellow lime. Ooh. Now, if you see a lot of water on there, it'll wrinkle up the paper, so it still might have been too much water on there. Don't do too many layers. Here we go, just stop. This Amazon paper will buckle, or you know, get bumpy. There we go. Just give it a minute or two to dry, but let's go back in. You can see it, see, it did bump a little, so I might have had a little too much water on there, but that's fine. Once it dries, it'll just mean the paper will be a little a bit bumpy, but it kind of turned it more like a big yellow, bright yellow, and it smoothed it a lot. So this works really nice, the Amazon paper. And let's try a blue or a pink on these flowers. You guys want to see a different color? Let's try... In this same botanical collection, or we could do a tulip. Let's see what we have here. Let's do like a, hmm. Let's do like some, that's a tough choice. How about we try to blend purple and a pink? I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out. Let's see, these are pretty dull without being sharpened. Let's just give it a shot. You can do three shades, dark, medium, and light within the kind of the same color family. Um, right now we're just experimenting with one darker and one a little bit lighter. So we shall see what happens. Let's actually, uh, let's just go in and do like one of these little flowers. The darker one, I'm just gonna kind of color in outside part to these kind of plain petals. Yeah, it definitely needs to be sharpened. Why didn't I think to grab my sharpener before I started this video and I don't have a pause feature? Oh, my bad. So the result will be different now if your pencils are sharpened. <laughs> oh, these are very flat. Let's do this pink now. Doing it very light into the center. Actually, this looks more magenta. So I'm not gonna swatch all my pencils. Um, so far, it looks like the colors look very, very close to what's on the, not only the tip, but the barrel. Tip's a little lighter than the barrel, but I'd say it's close enough where I can just look at the pencils to know I'm going to get a fairly accurate color. So I don't think I need to swatch them all. I'm not a big swatch fan. I do swatch all my Ahuhu Copic markers because I have hundreds, you know, 300 of them. And I have a booklet that has all my swatches in it, which I currently lost because I put it away when I was decorating for Christmas and now I can't find it. I thought it was probably, I thought I left it out because I needed it for my Christmas coloring, but I can't find it. And it has all my swatches in there for my markers, but took me like a week to do originally. I'm going back in with the darker one. 
I just put that pink more in the middle. This is still pretty light. I didn't push very hard. Let's go in here with our water pen. It has some green on it, so give it a squeeze. Dab it on something. And now I didn't put down very heavy color. Now if you get too much liquid close to the ends, it will bleed outside of your shape, especially if you have more water. So you want less water if you have a small space. Ideally the water based, these water pens work better on spaces that are a little more wide. I'm just kind of dabbing. Definitely looks better than when I colored it dry. I put too much water on again. So you just have to kind of give it a feel. This looks more like a tie dye. I'm just blending both those colors. There we go. Don't want to overdo it. All right. Let's look up close here to that flower. I blended, see? two different pink, pink, purple. So that looks nice. That leaf still looks stunning. It's dry, that didn't take very long. It's completely dry now. So the leaves are really pretty. Um, so, but you see what I mean? These pencils work better on bigger areas than little details if you're going to use the water. So there you go. I'm gonna open another couple sets here while this dries and let you, just to show them to you, we can see what the other pencils look like. And here's our Christina Caron, which is all dry now on the Nina paper, looking nice. Um, I've, the skin tones, I've never done water-based medium on a skin tone, so that is something I would want to experiment on. Um, on like this portrait collection, I've, I've never done water-based pencils for skin. So I would not experiment on one I've already started because if it looks terrible, like you'd wanna do that first, do your skin first. That way, if you don't like it, you can print another copy before you do all the rest and then go to do the face and realize the face looks terrible and it ruins your whole picture. So believe me, I've learned the hard way. Um, the portrait, <clears throat> the landscape. Let's look at this landscape collection. And I lost my scissors. Oh, no, I didn't. They fell to the floor. Let's look at the landscape collection. Um, you can start out by just getting one of these sets and see how you like them. Get one that probably you would use on the most different kinds of books. Like I would recommend one that has more than nature. The greens and the blues that you can use for, you know, sky and and backgrounds and holidays and any you know you know botanical type pictures. I think those are the kind I do the most. Next would be the florals. So get one that has colors you would use the most. And so this is the landscape collection. So they look very dark. There's quite a few darker browns here. I thought it might be kind of fun to do a couple on the hair. So we have a charcoal brown. What do we have here? We could do some hair with these landscape browns too. We have a bison, ooh, fancy. Bison and clay. And what is this? This is hickory. Well, let's just give it a shot. I'm going to just jump in and we're gonna do some hair. Let's do some Let's go over here and do some hair on this gal. She has more hair, the snow princess. And let's do, I'm gonna go figure out darkest to lightest. So we've got the bison, I say in this order, that one is much more dull than the other two. All right, so let's go in here with this bison and start darker at the root like natural hair might be if all all of us ladies who probably dye our hair <laughs> dyed the gray although this gal looks pretty young i'm gonna do some darker at the root and just do some darker in some of these 
darker areas we have here. It's grayscale. So this is bison. It's definitely like a milk chocolate. I always thought bison's had a little more gray in them, but I don't know. So we're just kind of feathering in here. I'm just gonna do it one side. I'm just gonna use this hand movement to get the color in. Very hard when the pencil's dull, so it, I am having to work it a lot harder. Just getting some of the darker areas. All right, then let's go in here with the clay. Kind of try to blend this and move our way outward. Ooh, that's pretty. Does look kind of clay colored. Interesting almost has like an orange tint to it which I guess Native American clay would look like that some clay is gray but in Santa Fe um, the clay type products you can buy made by the local Indians are definitely this orange tint just gonna lighten it a little more Ugh, it's making my hand tired and I'm going to go in with the third brown, and then I'm going to water brush it. And then we'll try to go back over the first layer of water with a pencil and see what happens. I think I want to get the dark one again. Make that root a little darker. I'm blending the two right there particularly. A little more of this clay. Leave some white space for your final color. Ideally, you might want to test these colors on a separate paper to make sure they're lining up the darker to the lighter, the, uh, the mid-tone and light tone. This is the hickory the final color. Do it very soft. Ooh, that one looks like an auburn. That's pretty. These are feeling like a cross between an oil and a Prismacolor, a wax, even though they're water-based, but they're not dry. They're kind of f f silky, but they're not crumbly like a Prismacolor or an Amazon Basics. So I feel like it's like a nice cross between. I'm trying to get a lot of color in there so we can then go over with the water. This one's very dull. And I'm doing this much faster than I would normally do, so I can show y'all, so you don't get bored to tears. My hand is hurting, but I'm doing it a lot lighter and faster than I normally would. Okay, so we have three different browns in here right now. Um, I still feel like I need to go in with this dark one. First, darken it in a few spots. While we do the water. Okay. Darken it wherever you see darker areas or where there might be some shadows. Let's go in with that middle one one more time. Blend over the dark. Now you don't have to do nearly this many layers if you're doing a water brush, but that was, this is intentional. So we can see what it would look like without it. All right, let's just get in here with our water brush and I'll be done. So I'll give it a good squeeze, get some water out of that. And we can go dark to light, which will bring some of that root color down which is what I intentionally want. But normally you might go light to dark. You see how that's pulling that darker one in? I think that looks more natural in, on hair than going light to dark. 
yeah, it's really nice. It's darkening up quite a bit, which I like. Okay, we're gonna just bring that down. And yes, you definitely wanna go light to dark normally, but for hair, I like to go the opposite. Now you can go back this way if you want. Bring the light upward, but I like to bring the dark down. So it looks like natural hair gradient kind of color from different shades of brown coloring and natural hair coming through. Dyed my hair is dark. I've dyed it so many times, different colors, that it's like five shades of brown, I think. And you can still see some of the red and blonde I put in there before. <laughs> And like when I go back over it with all dark with hair dye, when it starts to fade, it, you can see all the different shades. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. Yeah, I used a lot of water on this because it's not an Amazon book, so it can hold up better. The Nina paper isn't classically known as a water paper, but if you do a medium to light water, it works just fine. And there's no color here, but I'm going to actually get some on the brush and bring it over. There we go. Just really blending it in there nicely. And then you could take your dark and go over the wet pen, go over it wet. It just kind of smears it around though. So you see, I don't generally like to do that. So if you want to add more, I would wait till it dries personally. It looks better when you don't add the pencil back on the wet paper. All right, so let me zoom in and show you how this looks. We did, it's still wet, so let's dry it. But you see I did three different shades of brown from that um, landscape collection for her hair. And we did the, so I, this really dark part right here is when I just took the dry pencil back on the wet. So it doesn't look as natural as it did when you put the water brush on and let it dry before you put on any more. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, but look at, you can see how it looks like an auburn brown kind of blonde highlight by bringing the darker root down. And we had darker in some areas and we just kind of blended it all. So it looks more like a natural hair color. But um, I just wanted to show you I don't recommend going back over any wet paper with your pencil until it's dry. So yeah, that is how we are doing hair with three different browns. Here's that beautiful green we first did. They're both dry now. They both look a little different. So I'm gonna actually go back and finish this whole hat and gloves to match in all of this hair. And eventually I'll finish these pictures with different mediums. I won't do the whole picture in watercolor because little things like this are very hard to do with water mediums. I would use fine liner markers here. I'm going to use my Copic markers for the skin. A face this big, you can use pan pastel skin tones as well, which are dry and chalky and nice, blend really well. Whipped cream is kind of hard. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. And okay, well, that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll link everything you've seen here below. I hope you find something you like, including the printables, and I will see you in the next video.